we went on a backpack, a backcountry backpacking trip. The first mm -hmm. one overnight when uh -huh. she was 11, just the two of us, she really into like nature. And this is your oldest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like psyched about that. You know, it was great. We had, you know, it was hard, but we had a great time. And, um, and then recently she's had like a medical thing come up where she hasn't been able to walk and it hasn't been able to hike or she hasn't been able to walk easily. She's not like, um, on crutches or anything, mm -hmm. but anyway, and, uh, it's, you know, she's, that, she's that, that was like our thing. And I was like, ah, dang it. <laughs> so it's like a little challenging, but I do, I volunteer for different things. You know, I'll, I'll volunteer. I was like the parent who was like, okay, you want to go on the, the scouts ice hike? I'm, I'm in, I'll go on the ice hike. Like, mm -hmm. let's do the ice hike. So, you know, I think is, is that, I mean, so when we think about the special challenges, those challenges are being like this differentiation and there's this like real desire to differentiate. And that is normal. And that makes sense. What are some of the ways that we can, you know, meet these special challenges of this sort of tween and teen time, yeah. maybe, um, skillfully and mm -hmm. in a way that that preserves that connection or and even what are some things we can do when they're younger like i'd, I'd love to know kind of both of, those are two questions i realized but. <laughs> um i'll deal with the older one first okay. uh she's you said she's 14 mm -hmm. this is the prime time for I, and i hear the earnestness that you have to find activities with her which are all well and good but I I'd, I'd encourage you to also consider that it's even more important to have two ears and one mouth, which is <laughs> really doing double time on the listening. And by listening, I just don't mean by your physical ears, but also by your two eyes. Do double listening and half as much talking because she's got a lot of stuff that she's processing. And if she went from, and again, this is my sports psych hat going on, if she's gone from being active to not being able to move around as much, she's got a lot churning on inside. Uh, between that loss and, you know, all the stuff that she may not be able to participate in, this is a perfect time for y'all to be just you seeing her, acknowledging that she is in a different state, uh, uh, hearing her, hearing her heart in terms of what emotions are going on inside of her about this change of state, and then understanding, communicating your understanding. And that just means something as simple as, I, I hear you, hon, because that can be tough. That kind of empathy, that will go a long way in laying a groundwork and foundation for should her situation change and she's able to now resume things or if her situation doesn't change or if it stays the same, you know, as she goes through the next part of her high school career and experience. Um, for the younger ones, uh, really it's about, I mean, remembering, remembering that your mom, again, if you're, if you're talking about someone who's younger than the tween years, okay, I feel a lot of times and I've noticed with you know, the clients who come to me, the, it's almost like they've abdicated their power mm. as moms. It's like, uh, no, as a mom, you can set ground rules. Yes, as a mom, you can um, express a preference for how you'd like things done, <laughs> okay? And follow through on whatever you would think would be an age-appropriate consequence for adhering or not adhering to that. Um, I think moms lose sight of that because they haven't paused to consider what's going on inside of them and how they really think and feel about such discipline. And I'm using air quotes, okay? Because uh, that looks different for everybody. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, we, in, in mindful parenting, you know, we get um, people sometimes who, you know, it's, it, it's sort of agnostic as to like exactly where you want to have those boundaries, but we have a lot of people who are afraid to make boundaries sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, 
the truth is is your needs matter, (laughs) you know, and when some, a child's behavior is interfering with your needs, like, yeah, you got to have a boundary and we don't have to be mean about it. Like Mm -hmm. we're afraid to be that, you know, we don't want to be that harsh, mean parent, maybe that we had, but I mean, I don't know when my daughter was two and she didn't want to get dressed in the morning. It was like, all right, well, I'm packing up your clothes and we're going to go to school and I'm giving this baggie to your teacher. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, Sora didn't really didn't want to get dressed this morning. So here you go. It looks like she has to get dressed to school today. And that was pretty darn embarrassing, I think for her, (laughs) even at a young age. And so (laughs) she, she, that was it for that. You know, I mean, like we can have those boundaries as far as like our expectations. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree. And that makes kids feel cared for, right. To have some boundaries matters. Yes, they need that. That I mean, the psych research backs that up um, ad nauseum, uh, for lack of a better word. I mean, it, it just shows that you have to have some kind of structure uh, because that adds to their sense of safety. And when they have that safe sense of safety and you're consistent with it as best you can be, then they get a sense of security, which then gives them the foundation for, okay, I know you fed me, so I'm satiated. Now I can actually start looking at the other needs that um, need to be met in terms of relationships, you know, um, activities and things of that nature. Creativity, autonomy, yes. all mm-hmm. those different right. things. Right, all those yeah, things. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so um, what I'm hearing from you saying is that when they're little, mm-hmm. y- yes, like provide all the love and nurturing and and all that stuff and you know, boundaries, right? Like Mm -hmm. have, have those boundaries, you know, and, um, you know, if you need some help with those, dear listener, go, go get on the wait list for mindfulparentingcourse.com. We, we help you with that, Mm -hmm. um, enormously, but, um, so, and then once they get to be the tweens and the teens, is there, is there more work that like, as what is the mindset that we as mothers need to kind of go into? I mean, I hear that we're, we need to recognize our kids are going to differentiate from our, from us, Mm -hmm. but what are the, some of the things that we need to recognize within ourselves? Do we have to like, look at our own relationship with our own mothers? Like what, what is some of the work that we should be kind of considering as our daughters move it, get into that little older stage. (laughs) Actually, that's why one of the reasons why I wrote my book, What Mothers Never Tell Their Daughters, was for that very reason, to actually give moms tools in a very conversational tone of the book uh, around figuring out how they're thinking and feeling and behaving in response to, or sorry, in reaction to things that are going on during that transition period. Because, Mm -hmm. um, and parents and men and women do this where they can sometimes think that the the way in which they parented and i'm using air quotes when they were younger works the same and and it's really about giving your kids and your daughters in particular the the foundation of their sense of self so that they can then make decisions about what or learn about what they're good at, um, what they want to pursue, what who they want to be later on, where you're not going to react, but mostly respond. Catch new episodes of the Mindful Mama podcast and other free resources, including the Mindful Mom Guide at mindfulmamamentor.com. You can listen to every back catalog episode, including interviews with Dr. Dan Siegel, Janla Van Zant, Sharon Salzberg, and get meditations, join our private Facebook group, and more. Go to mindfulmamamentor.com now. I'll see you there.